Hi folks, it's Evo here from Thundermus Lure Company. Welcome to today's episode of Thundermus Fishing Tips. You know what? I just finished the dinner. The sun is going down. I got 15, 20 minutes. Why not get a line wet? That's what I'm gonna do, folks. And you know what I'm gonna do, folks? We're looking for that striper bite, but I'm gonna do something interesting today. I'm usually using the Top Water Mojo Mackie for stripers, but today I'm gonna use the peeper frog. It's just a little frog that we use for largemouth and smallmouth back home. And you know what, folks? Why not use it for striper? I've got this little back bay here, and if there's any striper around, they could be pushing bait up against this shoreline. Now, if I get one, I'm gonna have a real hard time to land them because I'm not really set up for this. I'll have, I'll have to drag them up over this, uh, over this mat of weeds. And I've got lots of debris behind me, which hurts my casting ability. But as you can see with this peeper frog, I can get long casts, which is good. But this is what boatless angling is all about. You got a fishing rod, you got a little bit of time, there's a shoreline, go check it out and get a line wet. Now vary my retrieve a little bit, fast and then slow it down and fast and then slow it down. Let's see if I can trigger a hit. Oh, there was a swirl. There's fish here, folks. Oh, there's fish here. Whoa. <laughs> what, a, what a hit. Whoa, hit and run, folks. Hit and run. Oh, my goodness. You got to love that. <laughs> oh, he just nailed that peeper frog. He nailed it. Wow, talk about exciting. Now comes the challenging part. Now the peeper frog, it's just a little frog, right? It's, it's a largemouth and smallmouth bait, but there's most likely smaller striper in here, so this is just like dessert size for them, right? Oh, that looks, actually, ooh. Looks like a decent fish, folks, but now we got a challenge. How am I gonna land them? That's the challenge. There's a little, oh, a little bay here. There we go. That's how you do it, folks. It's just a small striper. There we go. Boatless angler striper right there. Okay, I don't want to treble in my finger. I'm going to carefully, carefully, let's get you up in here, buddy, and we're going to get you released. Good hook set. Nice striper. What a bite. Explosive bite, folks, right on that surface. Just nailed it. Isn't that a nice striper? Beautiful striper right there. Boatless angling, folks. You gotta love it. Okay. This isn't gonna be pretty, but I'm gonna walk out here a bit. Way he goes. <laughs> oh man, folks, I love it. If I can get this line off my shoe now. There we have it. And the other good thing about the peeper, the hook, folks, is located right at the head of the frog, as you can see there. And that's where the fish are going to hit. When they hit, they're going for the head. A striper is no different than a largemouth or a, or a smallmouth. They're going to go for the head, and you're going to have a lot better hookups. Okay, so <laughs> not your conventional release, but a release nonetheless. I'm gonna give it five more minutes. Like I said, I just wanted to come out here. I had the urge to get a line wet, so why not do it? You got a chance to catch a fish and have some fun. And like I say, oh, did you see that? My goodness, folks, I, I pulled it away from him just at the last second. I don't know if you noticed that, but he came right to the shoreline after this frog. 
Let's see if we can trigger another hit. That was exciting. I just pulled it away from him just too quick. Okay, no follows that time. I got a little technical difficulty here. All right. Right into the wind, folks. Not a problem with this peeper frog because it's weighted. And for the boatless angler, you can get long casts. And the other advantage, folks, is that it has some rattles in it. So it makes some extra noise. So it's an extra attractor. Let's see if we could trigger another hit here. Right in that back bay, folks. See if there's one holding out there. Oh, there was one holding out there. <laughs> he, just, he missed it and I missed him. Oh my goodness. There was one holding in that back bay. <laughs> He's got me all wrapped up here now after that. That was exciting. Even though he, I didn't get him, folks, you know what? That was just as exciting as catching them. Just seeing them come up and attack that frog. All right. Let's try that again. Maybe this time he'll catch it. I'm moving it a bit quick, so maybe I can... Slow it down just a little bit. See if it makes a difference, or I'll go fast to get their attention and then slow it down so that they can hit it better and I have less of a chance of losing them. Ooh, pulled it right away from him. That's the problem with using braided line. Oh my goodness. What a, what a hit. Oh, folks, I tell you what. This is exciting. Top water fishing, folks, is super, super exciting. Oh, oh I just missed another one just missed them. I'm gonna have to hesitate a little bit more in order to get them to take that bait. And they keep getting my line wrapped around every time I pull and miss. But my 15 minutes of fishing is almost up. Oh, another almost hit. He kind of came up after it, but he didn't take it. Okay, we're going to give it another two or three casts, folks. And then my 15 minutes is up. I pulled it away from him again. Oh, this is unbelievable. But you know what, folks? It's just as exciting. Just seeing those hits. There we go. We're on, folks. This time, I let him take it this time. <laughs> this time, I let him take it, folks. I didn't. That's the problem with braided line. It's it's direct. Do you see the hit? You get excited. You gotta. I know I preached this and I didn't do it right, but you gotta wait. You gotta give them a couple of seconds, or at least at least one second, to take the bait. 
But I'll tell you what, just watching those hits was exciting enough for me. Catching the fish is the bonus always. There we go. We got another striper. Oh boy, folks. This is unbelievable. These fish are on the feed big time. Big time, folks. Hey, just a small striper, but you know what? We're boatless angling, right? And we're having a blast, a blast. See you later, buddy. Okay, you know what, folks? The inevitable one last cast. Why not? One last cast. I have some friends and family waiting for me. I said I'd be 15 minutes, so this is it. It's hard to leave, I'll tell you that. Okay, not that time. All right, you know what? Really, last cast. <laughs> last cast for sure. How many times have you said that, right? And taken 10 more? No, this is my last cast. This is it. I've had a fantastic 15 minutes of fishing. Super exciting. In top water. You know what? It doesn't get much better than that. Oh, gee, folks. Talk about last cast. Oh, and I lost him. Okay, just as well. <laughs> okay. Oh, I lost him in the weeds there, folks. He just shook my hook. But, like I said, it's hard to quit fishing right now because the, the, it's been an amazing 15 minutes. Hits, fish, activity, they're feeding. Unbelievable. Well, you know what, folks? I got to thank you for joining me on today's episode of Thundermist Fishing Tips. And yeah, okay, I had to take one more cast. Oh, in the weeds. It's really hard to stop. It seriously is. Okay, this is really my last cast. You can tell I don't want to leave, right? It's hard, folks. It's hard. For those of you who don't fish, it's hard. When the fish are on, you definitely don't want to leave. Okay, that's it. I'm done. You know what, folks? Thanks for joining me on today's boatless episode of Thundermous Fishing Tips. And as always, folks, until next time, good luck and good fishing. Get a line wet when you get a chance. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just do it. All right.